<laughs> now, do you um, believe in UFOs? Well, if you do, you will know it is World UFO Day today and also 66 years since the date of the Roswell incident when an apparent UFO crashed in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. Now, every July the 2nd, UFO enthusiasts come together to look at the skies. But what are the odds of there being life out there? Well, one astrophysicist, Sarah Seeger, is a professor of planetary science and physics at MIT and has come up with a new formula to work out the chances of us finding intelligent life in our universe in the next 10 years. And she joins us now from Maryland uh, via webcam. Um, tell, us the, tell us the equation, and if you can, explain it to try and prove or disprove UFOs. Well, I want to just let you know that the equation is actually not intended to prove or disprove that there are UFOs or that there's intelligent life. The equation is here to tell you that we're doing the real search for alien life. And by this search, I don't mean we're looking for signs of life that visited Earth. We're finding planets, other planets, around stars other than the sun. And around those stars, we're going to be looking for signs of life. Uh, and you're, you're trying to identify signs of life, what, through gases, uh, as I understand it? Right, we're trying to look at gases in the atmosphere. All life as we know it uses chemical energy to store, chemical energy, storing energy, releasing energy, just like on Earth, we breathe out carbon dioxide. Our atmosphere has oxygen and ozone. Those are, oxygen is produced by life. So essentially, we're looking for gases in an atmosphere that are potentially produced by life. And if we just bring up that equation again, can you just talk us through that? Um, if, you, if you can memorize it, which I presume you can. <laughs> Yes, well, I don't have the equation in front of me, but essentially what we're describing is the search for planets around other stars. And so we have terms in the equation, like how many stars are there near enough to us, to our solar system, that we can search. Then we go on to say what fraction of their, those stars are well-behaved enough, that they're, we can monitor them, they're not sending out flares or being variable. And then we ask after that, what fraction of planets have stars? in the so-called Goldilocks zone. What fraction of stars have planets in the so-called Goldilocks zone, where the planets are not too hot, not too cold, but just right for life? And all of those first three terms, we can actually quantify them. We can make measurements, and we have made measurements. And we know something about stars um, that are... We know something about the stars that we're looking for planets around. Uh, and there's this new satellite, isn't there, which can uh, read or see exoplanets. What, what are exoplanets? Exoplanets are planets orbiting stars other than the sun. Every star in the sky is a sun, and our sun has planets, so we'd naturally expect the other stars to have planets. And indeed, in the last 20 years or so, astronomers have found pretty much that, have found the statement to be true, that pretty much every star in our galaxy should have at least one planet. What, what is your hunch? It's not very scientific, but what is your hunch? Do you, th do you, do you think there is life out there? You know, here's the thing, is that scientists never like to say yes or no to something without any evidence whatsoever, especially on the BBC. So I have to tell you, though, statistically speaking, our own Milky Way galaxy has 100 billion stars. And we see in our universe upwards of hundreds of billions of galaxies. So if you just do the math and ask how many stars are out there and how many planets are out there, it really seems inevitable that there is life elsewhere in our universe. The point relevant for the UFOs today is not is there life, because we're almost certain there's life out there somewhere. It's is there any life near enough to our Earth, near enough to our solar system, that that life could come here or that we could eventually go and visit alien life elsewhere. And that's a much tougher statistic. And also, if there were life, whether we'd be able to communicate with, with it or them. Whether we could communicate, right. So the first search in my so-called revised Drake equation is to let you know that we are doing the very first steps in answering those questions by looking for signs of life on other rocky planets in the next 10 years. However, we're not looking for alien life. We won't know if the gases we find are produced by complicated life or just by simple single-celled bacteria. And that's the difference, but it's the first step into eventually assessing whether or not life could be common in our universe. Well, I'm hoping you find Krypton and maybe we'll um, find a new uh, Superman as well. Uh, Sarah Seeger, best of luck and uh, talk to you when you found one, perhaps. Thank you.